and ghouls out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and Christian's with me and it's not a vlog, it is another tag video. Our good buddy Sean Urshton um, tagged us again. I guess I guess we're not doing too bad. He, he, he tags us so I guess we're giving halfway good answers. And we have another tag and this tag is called the Universal Monsters and Horror Tag. And um, I believe there are 10 questions and these really, we've, we've looked at the questions, we've watched Sean's video and we've watched a couple of other people's videos. I uh, really enjoy everyone so far um, and these are really these made you think these are questions that really made you think so further ado let's answer Sean Urshton's uh, the Universal Monsters and Horror Tag so what's our first question if you were the invisible man slash woman what would you do with your power okay um this is probably gonna be a weird answer um, but what I would do is I would I would observe I think you learn so much about people when you're just observing them and no one's aware I believe it's also called stalking <laughs> but um, but but you know I, I, I think it would be interesting to learn about people even people you might not like you know sometimes you look at a person and you think you know their story and you don't know their story and you might find out that you might like or have more in common with someone who you don't care for than you thought you I did guess so. um, you, you, it's the best way to walk in a person's shoes without actually walking yeah, in their shoes. That nothing else is a good way to get dirt in somebody. Yeah, that too, that too. Um, I, I know, I like your answer, Sean, where you said you'd fight crime. And, and I guess if I was in a situation where I could help, I would. But I think I'd just use mine for power of, of observing. I get that. Is that weird? Is that, um, is that stocky, guys? I don't know. You know, I would, I would observe and try to see people's uh, lives through a different camera than my own, if that makes sense. What about you? Well, as most 80s teen comedies would, would tell you, uh, t uh, tell you as I am a teenager apparently I would use it to you know p uh, spy on women and stuff but actually I would use it very practically well can't you use one of those things now to spy on women those flying oh the drawing thing yes <laughs> I guess I'm pretty sure that's illegal <laughs> only if you get caught fair point true about anything in life uh, no, I would use it as for journalism pers uh, purposes. I can't remember what I watched, but there was something I watched where someone, like a side character, did have the power of invisibility. And, la and la one of the last things was uh, the show was like he becomes like a famous reporter beca uh, because he was at all these big events and nobody knew about. Oh, cool! Because he was because uh, he was invisible and was able to ju uh, just write down notes and give. Give a, a deeper perspective. Give a deeper perspective on uh, things. So I would use it for journalism to get very rich. Cool, cool. I like that answer. What's the next question? Okay, and who's your favorite Universal Monster? Okay, th this is going to be so cliche, but I, I, and I know probably everybody's going to answer this the same, and I wish I could be like, you know, Rebel Jen and Against the Grain Jen, but I'm going to have to go with the crowd too, and I'm going to say Bella Lugosi's Dracula. He's just so, he brought, uh, I know there's Christopher Lee too, and we'll I like, that in a minute. and I like Christopher Lee a lot, but I, I, I don't know, there's just something about LaBella Lugosi, he brought, he brought sexy to the vampire. I get that. That seductiveness, and that's cool. Um, I, I like all the universal characters, but Wolfman is tragic. Wolfman's tragic. Well, yeah. I, I, depending on your perspective, um, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon, he's kind of rapey. They well, fix that in the shape of yeah. Water? Watch our Shape of Water vlog if you want to hear more on like why we think the creature from the Black Lagoon was kind of a rapist. But the old one had some rapey elements. He did have a lot of rapey elements. Frankenstein was another tragic one. Um, the mommy's kind of just there. Yeah. Um, I, am I forgetting any major ones? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're meaning like all the major ones. I, yeah, I, know. You could, I guess you could say like the cat creeps or something like that too. But, I yeah. suppose so. Was the cat woman one? From no, that was MGM, and I think Universal bought the right. Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna stick it with Bela Lugosi's Dracula. This is gonna be mine. What about you? I mean, I, I, I thought about I like Invisible Man because I think that movie's just fun, but probably Frankenstein. Frankenstein, it, it, it's just the but best he's one. so tragic. I know, right? Are we, and also, are we talking about Doctor Frankenstein or the creature? Oh my you god, we've been over this. So this is like. the pop culture thing, referring to the monster, not the doctor. Okay. Because there's been like. It technically three Dr. Frankensteins in throughout all the Universal ones. Oh yeah, and there have been. Because there was him, his son, and I'm pretty sure his grandson. Yeah, there was one with his grandson. Yeah, so you got three of them. Yeah, uh, uh, so you're talking about the monster. Yes, for, uh, for, uh, specifically played by Boris Karloff. Not, no dissing the uh, Lon Chaney Jr. version or anything, but it, but specifically because 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 the first because Bride and the first one are the best ones in the series. What about Robert De Niro? God damn it. God damn it, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. You make Bram Stoker's Dracula look good. Uh, 
kind of do. Well, cool answer. What's our next question? If Lawrence Talbot, a.k.a. Wolfman, asked ask you to watch over him and shoot him with a silver uh, bullet if he changed, would you do it? I would want to because I get why, you know, because he's he's the most, I think he's even more tragic than Frankenstein because, you know, it just happens yeah. and he has no control over it. It's just whenever the moon does its thing. Um, but knowing me, I'd probably fall in love with him and could, like, I would say I would with every intention of doing it, but I probably would fall in love with him and I can't kill you. <laughs> Is it because Lon Chaney was sexy? Well, you know. <laughs> It's just, a, it's just, I don't know. I think I would be one of those women that would that. be like a wolfian. I, I get that. <laughs> I'd shoot him. So yeah, Well, that's the right thing yeah, to do. I'd shoot him. And I suppose if I really loved him, that would be because that would be the kindest thing to do and it would save other people misery. But wait, push comes to shove. I don't know if I could do it or not. I Maybe I don't hope I could, but I honestly don't know. Here's going to start a flame war in the comments. Who would win in a fight, Frankenstein or Dracula? Okay, I'm gonna go with Dracula. Um, I like Frankenstein, and but Frankenstein doesn't exactly, especially Abby Normal somebody. If <laughs> yeah. we're going with that brain, um, you know he did have an abnormal brain, so it, depending you could, on which one, you could have Bela oh, Lugosi geez. fighting Bela Lugosi, but while being played by uh, by um, Lon Chaney. Okay, but 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 we're not. I'm gonna just go with not not. I You're think, going with first movie Frankenstein and first movie Dracula. Yes, I am, and I think and Bela Lugosi. I mean, he, well, Dracula could change into anything. Like you know, he could be mm -hmm. a bat, he could do this, he could be a wolf, that kind of thing. And I, I think he has more of an edge. And I think Sean talked about this in his video, and I totally agree with you, Sean. I just think that he would be the one that would uh, would be able to uh, trick Frankenstein. I get that. You know, I'd say Frankenstein just because brain over broad kind of. Basic, I say I'd say Frankenstein because. One thing, he can outlast Fra uh, Dracula because Dracula at most can only go uh, twelve hours and then he and then he turns to dust. Frankenstein, does, sunlight doesn't really matter much. No, it doesn't. But then when the moon plus, turns, uh, well, but then plus de uh, plus dead body uh, plus a de uh, plus dead body doesn't really get fatigued. I imagine Dracula would eventually get fatigued. True. I'm gonna say Frankenstein. True, true. I, I, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter if the moon or any of that sort of. Yeah. It's not like a werewolf. Yeah, I guess, but I still think uh, Franken, uh, uh, Dracula would still be smart enough to to do something. How did we? Hours. How did they never do? How did they never do a Dracula versus Frankenstein? Uh, Frankenstein movie? Did they write a script? I'm pretty sure they wrote a script. Yeah. And something happened. I remember. Something I think it's because Lugosi and Karloff hated each other and refused to work with each other. I, I don't think, think they hated. I think Bella hated. Uh, yeah, Karloff. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, he was a sensitive man. I get that. This will, this will be an interesting considering what you've done recently. What? Uh, uh, do you think Norman ba if Norman Bates existed, could he be re he rehabilitated oh, with, through therapy? Okay, so you guys know I kind of have a thing for Norman. I love all of the psychos. By the way, Jason, I really enjoyed your ranking. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, no. I, well, okay. See, the thing is, is Norman Bates... You, that's one of the things I love about Norman Bates because you never, like the first one, yes, he is completely bonkers. But in the other movies, you don't know how much he's actually mad, how much he's playing mm -hmm. people, how, you know, because people are pushing him to go mad. I mean, there's a lot of factors. It depends on whether or not the other movies happen or not. not. If it's just Psycho 1 Bates, assuming only that happens... Theoretically, because he was pretty much just wanted to lead a normal life, beginning a Psycho Two, and then you know, you know that the things happened in Psycho Two, uh, Psycho Two, and kind of pushed him over the edge back to where he was in the other two movies. Yeah, he goes back into a psychosis, and Psycho Three, you never know how much. That's what I, and that's I think one of the reasons why I love Psycho Three is because you really never know if he's all there, if it's his, if it's his mental illness, or if he's just using a mental illness and he's playing everybody. I think that's one of the things I love about three. Um, but four, if you remember four guys, um, he he was going to kill his wife because he didn't want to bring in another, she was pregnant with his child and she, he didn't want to bring forth another monster. In fact, I think that's a direct quote from yeah. the movie. And like, he's going to kill him and he's talking to this talk show host and she's trying to talk him out of it. And at the end of the movie, he does, he's like right up until the very end, he's going to kill her and then he can't bring himself to because the movie says he's not that person anymore and he really does love his wife and um 
he, he, his, he, the, the, his love for his wife kind of uh, overpowers the mental illness. And I know in real life, it, yeah. you know, people can love people, but sometimes their demons are stronger than their than their um, will. Yeah, than their will. So it depends. And this one's a hard question. Yeah. It, it really depends on the movie. But if we're let's just say we're going with Psycho One. Yeah. Uh, no, I think. I, I think people, because if you think about it, someone else would have done that. Mm -hmm. If Psycho 2 had never happened, some asshole... Yeah, you're and, probably right. And also with Psycho 2, another thing I want to bring up, I don't necessarily hate what they're doing, because if it was one of my loved ones, this is what I love about the movie, you're put, you're, you're literally in both shoes. You're in Norman Bates' shoes, and the other foot is in the family's shoes, because if it was one of your loved ones, you might not have so much sympathy that mm -hmm. the rest of us do for Norman yeah. Bates. I don't think Norman Bates is evil. Mm -hmm. I, I don't don't, but I made this way too in-depth and calm. I'm sorry, Sean. You're kind of a psycho fan. I'm kind of a psycho fan. I, I loved your shirt, by the way, Sean. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but I, I, I think the true answer just for for Norman Bates' thing was uh, probably not. I, I think too many people would mess with him and do something to him. But in Psycho 4, it did show that yeah. he beat out. So, uh, But I don't think so in real life. Yeah, I don't either. So, okay, I'm next, sorry. Next question. What is your favorite universal horror film? Now, no, this can also include, this isn't like specifically the classic ones. It could be any horror movie universe that's put out. So like Halloween 2, 3, The Thing, uh, any of the psychos. I'm pretty sure they own the rights to Phantasm, but I don't think they put any of them out. So I don't know about that one, but you know, you oh. got all them. Oh God, my favorite one. Mm -hmm. huh? No, they also put out People Under the Stairs. <laughs> oh, well then People Under the Stairs. <laughs> I, yeah, that, that, that really is one. I, yeah, they put out people, you have them. You can check your tape, I'm, I'm like 90% okay. sure. Uh, yep, universal. Then people, I, I know this is a classic thing and I totally feel the classic vibe, but I would definitely go with uh, people under the stairs. That mother is, oh my god, I love that mother. I wouldn't want her as my mother, but in a movie, in a safe distance movie way, I love that mother. I get that. You kids are going to be the death of me. I get the that. The death of me! I get that. You know, I worked so hard to make the dress, and you get blood! That's a good movie. I, I just, I love that movie. So probably people under the stairs. And if we're going to go for a classic one, I'm going to go again with my guy, my Drac guy. I get that first Dracula. Yeah, Dracula. That's good. So, what about uh, you? Uh, for a non-classic non Halloween 3, because it's the best Halloween movie, I will fight anyone to the death on this. It is the best goddamn Halloween movie ever. They should have stuck with that instead of going down the route of Buster Rhymes and all, and... <coughs> No. <laughs> but I have a point that you might not be aware of. Is it that Michael Myers isn't in it? <laughs> uh -huh. Well, good, because Michael, My uh, Michael Myers didn't fit, wouldn't have fit in that movie. Colin Cochran's also a better villain than Michael. I said it. You're damn right I said it. Hate me. Hate me. Yes, hate him, because this does not refute, this, the, 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 his, his thoughts do not reflect Jen's reviews from the grave. Michael all the way. I like Halloween 3 for what it is. If it didn't have anything to do with the Halloween series, I'd be totally fine with it. It just doesn't belong in the Halloween series. I'm sorry. No hate. I know there's a few of you like my son out there who really love Halloween 3. It's the best one. Anyway. Yeah, I have respect for it, but no. And, and for a classic, probably it's not a Frankenstein. That's a good one. Okay, next question. Yeah. If Jaws was released today, do you think it would still have the same effect? Okay, full disclosure, guys, I'm not the biggest Jaws fan. I No hate, I, but it's kind of like a Blair Witch to me. I acknowledge it does have a place in horror, and it does deserve the hype it gets. It's just not my thing. I don't think so. See, here's the thing. Of, I mean, Jaws shaped how movies are released now. So I don't know exactly how exactly Jaws, how movies would work with, if Jaws wasn't released when it was. So I'm going to say no, just for the fact of, I don't know if if movies would be the same if it were right now, like release-wise release and, you know, what companies and stuff, if it weren't for Jaws, so. I get that. I, I'm going to say no, just because I honestly don't know. I don't think if it was released today, it would have the same impact, but you, I don't know, maybe it would. Jaws isn't my thing, so, you know, 
Really, your little brother, he's the biggest Jaws fans okay. of all of us. Now here's an interesting one. What is the best version of The Mummy? Boris Karloff version, Brendan Fraser remake, or the Tom Cruise remake? I mean, the Tom Cruise one was just so artistically valid. I mean, all the great performances in that. I mean, he was so Good wonderful. The horror in that was absolutely wonderful. It, and it wasn't the, just this you know, Mission Impossible ripoff, which took some sheer balls and guts to do. I mean, God damn, it was a mess. Masterpiece. We're gonna lose all our friends. I'm kidding, by the way. He, Fuck the Tom Cruise movie. Oh god, that was a horrible movie. Um, the, the movie, okay, don't get mad and don't get mad out there in YouTube land. I know what I'm about to say is gonna be probably booed, and I get it. The Tom Cruise one? No, no, not the Tom Cruise one. Never the Tom Cruise one. Can we all agree that movie was terrible? Yes, I don't think it worked even as an action movie. No, it didn't. Um, but the movie I'm gonna go with is from the 90s, and you gotta remember I'm a 90s kid, so maybe you guys won't be so harsh with me. I actually really liked the Brendan, the first one. The rest of them are, are not my thing, but I actually really enjoy the first movie. I get that. I do. I think it's fun. The Mummy to me was not one of my personal favorites. It's I, the least one. I agree with you on this. By the way, the Mummy's all. See, I also see. I'm gonna say as well the Brendan Fraser one. But since it technically was released by Universal in the states, does the Hammer one count? Because if it does, then I'm gonna say that. But okay. I'm gonna go with you on the Brendan Fraser one if it doesn't. Because yeah, original Mummy's fine, but it's just kind of a Dracula knockoff. It is in some ways it, a lesser. It's a lesser Dracula. It's a lot lesser Dracula movie. And it wouldn't be that great. It wouldn't be like one of the classic Universal movies if it weren't for Karloff in it. He's good in it, the effect, and the makeup's good in it, but it's just kind of a, probably my least favorite of the big Universal movies. And and that this is how he got started into horror. When he was a little boy, he watched all yeah. of these. These, and then when he got a little older, he discovered the hammer. Mm. But he cut his teeth on these. Even movies. as a kid, I thought, wow, this is just a knockoff of Dracula. Yeah, and the Brendan Fraser, it's fun. It's, and mo it's more memorable. It's there's st let's put it yeah uh, there's stupid movies, but the Tom Cruise one helped me realize that, you know what, it, they're stupid, but at least they were done well. And they were fun, kind yeah. of stupid. Tom and, Cruise was just stupid. Yeah, and Brandon Fraser, for what he does, he makes the most of the yeah, role. Everyone in it is good, plus the other actor that, the one. Yeah, I know, the, the Egyptian dude, right? Yeah, the, yeah I know. Yeah, he about. was, he's been in that Adam Sandler movie. He's been in a lot. He's a good actor. He's mm -hmm. a good comedian, a comedic actor. But, um, yeah, I, the, but, and also the Tom Cruise one did make me so much appreciate the Brandon Fraser one. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm gonna go with no hate, but gonna go with the Brendan Fraser. Same, unless the Hammer one can count. Cool. Okay, next uh, next question. What is the most underrated Universal horror film? Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> um, did you ever find out if the one was or wasn't? No. She was gonna say Dracula versus Billy the Kid, but it was, they got the rights to it, but it was never Cara released. Jean's in it. Yeah, he was, but the, we. They got the rights to it later, but it, it wasn't released by them, so I don't think it counts. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> okay, so no Billy, Ki Billy the Kid versus Dracula? No, no Billy the Kid versus Dracula. Okay, well then I'm going to have to go um, with <laughs> underrated, huh? Then I'm going to have to go with, uh, and I, I know, I don't know if this is over underrated, because you hear a lot of people talk about this, and this, but this is because of your brother. Oh! Yeah. House? Yeah, House of Frankenstein. I, I, you, my, my, my little eight-year-old son, he discovered it when he was about six, mm -hmm. and for, they played it on AMC for a Halloween thing once, and, and, and we got the DVD for him, and he just, oh my god, he loves that movie. And I think because I've seen that one so much more than some of the others, I'll have to go with that one. I know it's not a very an, 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 an inspiring answer, but it's an honest one. That's a good one. Yeah, but is it really underrated? Because a I lot of people know. know. Yeah, I guess it was the first. It was the first like monster mash kind of thing. Yeah. Because you got Drac, you got Hunchback, you got Frankenstein. Was it Abbott and Costello? No, that came out a year. I like two years afterwards. Okay. But yeah, uh, mine is actually one I only I only ever hear one dude bring it up a lot. It would be James Rolfe, the, the angry video game nerd for his Monster Madness. He brings it up a lot. Is the old Dark House with like. Boris Karloff, and of course I have to get this. It has it has the woman who played Old Rose in Titanic. For, oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And when she was young, I don't care about Titanic. She's good in Old Dark House, but but mainly Boris Karloff is an as a kind of as the first evil butler. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah, now that I think about it, it's kind of, that might have been where that trope started of the butler did it. Cool. That's so yeah, good old dark house. That's I'll, a good it's, one. It's, under, it's underappreciated in my opinion. And you're right, I don't hear very many people talk yeah. about that. Next, okay. next and last question, which is the better Dracula, the ghost seat or Christopher Lee? Well, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I already know this. Um, but and I'm gonna have to go against the grain with you on this one, and I'm gonna go Bella Lugosi. He just Christopher Lee is really good, and then well, where's James Carradine? Yeah, I was about to say like James Carradine, John, John, John Carradine technically played. Where's John Carradine? He John Carradine technically played Dracula more times than Lugosi did. So. Yeah, I think he only played it two, right? Yeah, but Lugosi only played two. Carradine. If you count Beauty the Kid versus Dracula, he played, I do. It, he played it four times and Christopher Lee played it like seven or eight. Yeah, now, Christopher Lee brings a, a very, very dark intensity to that role. Not And, and I like him, I, I like him. But if you want a sexy vampire, well, I would go with Chris Sedan, but for this, <laughs> but, but for this question, um, you, you gotta give it to uh, uh, Lugosi. Not to mention, you gotta remember when he—that uh, was the only English he knew. He just learned. He didn't even really learn his lines. He just learned them to say them in English. But he didn't bother to, yeah. you know, know what he was saying. Kind I of get, thing, I get which that. Which is a hell of an acting if you think about it. Yeah, I, I get that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with L uh, Lugosi, and I know where you're gonna go. With. I mean, Christopher Lee. Yeah, I, I love Christopher he Lee. Worships he worships that. I'm man. pretty sure. Play Dracula the most times. That and Christopher Lee was just a badass. Do he was. Can you name me another seventy-year-old actor who just decides, you know what? In my old age, I'm going to start a metal band, which he did. It's pretty legit. Um, I can't remember the name of the band, but yeah, check out Christopher. Lee. Look up Christopher Lee metal band. You'll find it eventually. It's kind of legit. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just really like how Christopher Lee d uh, d uh, pl uh, played the role. He played with, he played it with a lot more a lot more menace than Legos. He wasn't really seductive. He was more just I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, he did he did the seduction part okay mm -hmm. in some scenes, but uh, you know. Yeah, that and he, that and he had that and he had the greatest on screen relationship, most be uh, beautiful relationship with Peter Cushing. Yes, he did. <laughs> they they had quite possibly the uh, the most beautiful relationship in horror of, of, of Van Helsing and Dracula, the most uh, sweet catty relationship. Yeah, I'm not going to... If you watch those movies, they they kind of make... Some of those movies do make it seem like they're exes. Yeah. Which I kind of like. Yeah, it, it is fun. There, there are... There, I'm not knocking the, the Hammer movies nor the anyone in them. It's just I like Lugosi a little bit. I get that. I'm old school, if you can say. And <laughs> I get that. that was our last that question. That was the last question. That was our last question, Sean. These were awesome questions. We uh, we really enjoyed doing this. You really We really had to put our thinking caps on and thank, thank you so much for including us. That was super, super nice of you. Hopefully we gave you good answers. And uh, Jason, if you're watching, I love that this has nothing to do with this, but I loved your psycho thing. I, I loved your ranking of all the psychos. Awesome job, dude. Um, and uh, I guess this is the time to tag anybody else who wants to do it. Feel free, play with us, enjoy it, and thanks for watching, right? I guess. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you stumbled on our channel and um, like the content, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, because we appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Stay scary, guys.